Now that we know the three uh, simple gas laws, uh, Boyle's Law, Charles Law, and Gay-Lussac's Law, we can actually combine those into what is known as the combined gas laws. All right, um, so what we had before, we had um, P1 uh, over uh, T1 equals some uh, constant or uh, equals P2 over T2, rather, or Gay-Lussac's Law. And then uh, volume times pressure uh, equal to each other for Boyle's Law. And uh, Charles Law gave us uh, the relationship between uh, volume and temperature. V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. And so what we can do is we can combine all these three relationships into one function known as the uh, combined gas law. So pressure over temperature and volume over temperature and volume times pressure all give us the same function. So we can do P1, V1 over T1 equals P2, V2 over T2. And that's known as the combined gas law. And so uh, what we can do, again, if we know our initial conditions and we change, say, pressure and volume, we can figure out the new temperature. Or if we know the initial conditions and we know the volume and temperature, we can determine the final pressure. All right. So let's take a look at one of these examples. So let's say we have a gas sample that has a pressure of 455 millimeters mercury or torr at 25 degrees Celsius and a volume of 4,050 milliliters. What's the final pressure at that volume and that temperature? Okay. So one thing we should say before we do problems like this is that the temperature for gas laws must be in Kelvin. That is because um, Uh, Kelvin is an absolute scale, and so if we double the temperature in uh, Kelvin, we can expect a doubling of volume. We can't say that in Celsius. And so in the laboratory, we uh, measure the temperature in Celsius, and so if we remember, we can just add 273 or 273.5 to get the uh, temperature in Kelvin. All right. And so we've got our combined gas law, which is uh, P1 V1 over T1 equals P2 V2 over T2. And so we just need to uh, find out what we're looking for and uh, what our different variables are. Okay. So a sample initially has a volume, pressure, and temperature here. So these are all our first values. This would be P1. T1 and the initial volume V1. The final pressure is what we're looking for. What is the final pressure? So we're going to be solving for V or excuse me, P2. Uh, V2 is 2250 and then the temperature, the final temperature is T2 155 degrees Celsius. So first, let's uh, solve for P2. What we need to do is multiply both sides by T2. I'll cancel it out on this side, put it on that side, and then divide both sides by uh, V2. To get rid of V2 on the right, so we're left with P2. So we've got P2 equals T2 times P1 times V1 all over V2 times T1. And of course we have to remember to calculate our temperatures in Kelvin. And so T1, which was 25 degrees Celsius, plus 273 is going to equal 298 Kelvin. T2 
was 155 degrees Celsius. And adding 273 to that equals, well, I better, better break out my calculator. 155 plus 273 equals 428. And now we can plug this into our equation. All right, so we've got P2 equals T2, 428 Kelvin, times P1, which was 455 millimeters of mercury, times V1, which was 4,050 milliliters all over v2 which is 2250 milliliters times t1 which was 298 kelvin after we converted it to kelvin okay one way we can make sure we did our algebra correctly is by making sure our units cancel and giving us the units that uh, would make sense for pressure so kelvin cancel milliliters cancel and so we're left with units of millimeters of mercury which are units for pressure so we just need to calculate put this into our calculator i'll move this up a little bit and what we need to do is take 428 times 455 times 4050 divided by 2250, divided by 298, equals 1,176 millimeters of mercury. And we're probably gonna have to cut this down to three significant figures. So we'll have to go 1,180 millimeters of mercury. Now, one thing we could do is we could ask ourselves, does this make sense? Um, another way we can check to make sure we're getting the right answer. Uh, so our initial our temperature increased and our volume decreased. Should our pressure have increased? Since uh, volume is um, inversely proportional to pressure, increasing or decreasing the volume should increase our pressure. So check, that looks good. Um, pressure is directly proportional to temperature, Gay-Lussac's law. So increasing the temperature should also increase our pressure. And so in both scenarios, it makes sense that our pressure increased from 455 torr to 1180 torr or millimeters of mercury.